Hi, I'm Venus Kowalka. Welcome to my kitchen. Guess what? It's Halloween. It's my favorite season of the year. I got a lot of comments and I got a, a lot of uh, viewers following right now and it, the, the one thing that they requested the most was my figurines. Verusca, can you show us how to do my wedding couple? So I thought, well, it's a great season, Halloween. Why not to do a very gothic, dark wedding couple? Going back to the mold, so you have to watch the, my video about mold. So how to make the mold? To make the molds, you can use your dolls. Don't tell my daughter that. <laughs> Look around the shops now. It's Halloween season, so there is all these great little toys to put around the house to scare people, you know? So even my ear, look, I can use even that to make molds. And that's what I did. For this couple we're gonna use, I bought a little skelet, like that one, that scary one. And I made a mold of that. A lot of people ask me, how do you make a 3D mold? It's very simple. You make a mold of the face first, and then you make a mold of the back. You sandwich together, and you get a perfect round mold to make a round face. That's what we're gonna use today for this wedding couple. Very simple items. Of course, you need a fondant, you need skewers to make sure your figurine is gonna stand up or sitting down, if you're gonna make your figurine sitting down. So you need a platform to support your figurine. So these are dummies, uh, styrofoam dummies are great. They skew us, like I say, a rolling pin. We are gonna show you how to use the pasta machine too, that I really like it. Bowling tools, a very nice and clean blade to cut it. Maybe scissors you may need and a brush and you need of course a plier to cut your skewers we need cmc it's just a powder and we may mix this to uh, make the, the fondant stronger and sets hard quick also we need the tie loose glue what we do is we get a little spoon of the tie loose put inside the pot and then you put the lid on top give a little shake i like to do this the day before because then when you're gonna use it's nice and thick almost like a gelatine and that's the consistent you need to work with fondant you can't have too much water so is that's all you need to make a figurine but we're gonna start with the groom you need black fondant i always say to my students a handful here is something that i will provide for you especially if you join my newsletter I have the template of everything. Send me messages, you know, because we like to hear your feedback. So this is your the, the template and it has almost all the measurements and how much you need for everything. A handful right now in here of fondant, about 100 grams, to start making our legs. If you are going to make this figurine sitting down, there is no much gravity going on, so it's not really necessary to add too much tie loose. But if you're going against gravity and you're gonna make this figurine standing up then you do need tie loose tie loose will set this hard quicker and it will change the structure of your figurine so a teaspoon and we work this round now what you have to understand is when you're working with tie loose you have to work really quick because tie loose sets makes your phone change the structure of your phone and make your phone into stronger because there's one thing too when you are working with a phone a pet package that is already open the fondant is not so soft if you buy a brand new package the fondant will be a lot of more softener and then you need a lot of more tie loose sometimes working with figurines or even flowers i like to work with the old fondant because they have more structure we're gonna open this leg now i like to put in my weight just on the sides in here and leave the middle bigger and then you join the two pieces together and you get the two legs there and a very nice brazilian bun ah i'm brazilian so guess what my grooms always have a really nice bun now by using my template you can just put this piece on top and you know exactly where to cut it 
the leg for the height. So remember, consistency is very important. If you keep consistent, when your clients come and ask you for figurine, you have everything, you know, all the template supplies, so you keep consistent. All the figurines was always gonna be the same in height, same in thickness. So, of course, a personalized figurine, you must tell your client, this is personalized, you know, and never one figurine, and it will never look exactly like the other, because it's handmade. You can try to have the templates with you, and you make sure that you, you keep consistent, and they, you get a, a much better work. That is our leg. If you're sitting our figurine down, you just bend the knee and put our figurine sitting down. We put a skewer through. This figurine we're making today is standing up. So guess what? I have to do everything again. So now we're gonna have to put the skewer through. I always tell my students, twist, 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 and go. Don't just push in one go because then you deform the leg. Just keep push, pu pushing and twist, pushing and twist until you get to the other end. And I always try to go a little bit on the middle, closest to the middle as possible because we're gonna build a whole body through the top in here. So the closest to the middle as possible is the way to go. When the skewer is there, you could put a, a skewer on the other leg if you want to give you more stability, especially if you are delivering this cake a long distance. You can put another skewer there so you have a really good structure for your figurine. But uh, just suppose if it's a Brazilian one and we love to put a soccer ball underneath our legs, so then you can twist your leg, maybe put a soccer ball underneath there. I also like it to leave a lot of skewers big skewers because that's what is gonna go inside of your cake so that also will give a lot of stability to your figurine it's up to you if you want to put a, another skewer on the other leg you are very welcome remember push and turn push and turn push and turn until you get to the other side of your leg this one doesn't have to be really long because this one is our neck that is gonna go all the way to the head and but this one can be be shorter because it's just there to support the leg in straight position so and then of course I have to put Tylus glue make the skewer wet to go through our figurine and of course now we have to make the shoe quite easy as you can see here you only need two tear drops so uh, I found it easy if you get a ball and then you cut it in the middle it's a guarantee that the two shoes will Look at the semi. And you just make like a tear drop. You can even use the template if you want. And I like to put a little mark, a little cut on the on the end there. So when you turn around, you almost look like a little heel. A little bit of glue. And then you put it at the end of your figurine. When you're putting on the styrofoam, make sure that you make the hole first. So, you know, uh, usually is a uh, one finger space there between the two legs. Make sure to make the hole first, you know, so you have no resistance there. Yeah. Okay. And then you're gonna roll up. You go the maximum you can go there on the styrofoam, and that's it. I like to add, you know, little lines at the back of the uh, paints. There you can see little lines there. This is just like a folding position. The more details you add, the more brides and grooms appreciate. Maybe you want to put a little bit of marking here on the front, you know, and some little marks on the end, just to look like that she is folding. And remember, the legs should never be straight together. You should have a space 
women maybe they can have the legs together but the boys they cannot do that so you keep like that is a more natural position and it, uh, it looks cute and that's it the good is really good if you could wait until the next day to start adding the top parts of this figurine because you know there is a little bit of weight when you start putting on the upper the upper body and the top of the face you know so I really like to do my legs especially for my figurines standing up the day before but uh, we have no time today so we keep going we are going to keep going so now we're gonna do upper body the white part so make sure to clean your hands all right and you, like I said, just fondant, to, my package was already open, so uh, it's already an old fondant, so I can feel that the fondant is not so uh, soft when, like you, when you open the package. But So I'm going to add half a teaspoon to mine. You may have to add a teaspoon to yours. You see, the CMC is hard to give exactly the amount that you need because some of you have warm hands warm heart and you may need more others need less that's why i always try to work with the semi of fondant because i get to know the fondant i can say to everybody when they come into my shows or they come to my class it's so easy to make a man it starts with a bowl then a sausage we have to tap a little bit there you go before our wedding i'm already killing my groom give a little tap on the top so you create his shoulders so i live in australia and the males have very nice open shoulders i'm gonna give a little pinch just to mark where his neck is all right so i know exactly where his neck is right there and of course again if you wanna a little bit of waist before wedding they all look slim and they have waists that's before Mary. Put it on your template that you have right there and you know exactly where to cut it. And then of course we get our skewers and we put our skewers through. Try to go up on the middle where the neck is there, right there. High loose glue and we go through the skewer that we had before. So here's our glue sitting down and we put the skewer through and it's exactly the same thing to the groom standing up so now we're gonna do his collar and his tie i have two types of ties that we're gonna do i really like this replacement blades for the stainless knife because they are straight they give me a nice straight cut they're very cheap and when you finish it you just Shack on a rabbit for his little tie. There's a long tie in here, and he, his collar is very simple. You just need a rectangle. We have template in here, so all I need to do is put in position there, and then I just cut the excess. Then for his tie, that tie there is just your rectangle again, and then of course you cut to the point. You can put it there for measurements if you want. And then I like to pinch with my fingers like that, and then two little scores. Put the glue right in front, and then put it, the tie there. This other little guy here is a Halloween theme. And put the glue there. And put his collar there, so you can see. And cut the the collar like that, and then of course you can put a little bow tie if you want. This little monster is a skeleton, so his neck is white. For this figurine, his neck is the skin color. For this little figurine, I'm just gonna make a little white bow for his neck. But for this figurine, we would add skin color. All right, so now we're making his suit. So I just need a little bit of black, and I'm going to use the pasta machine. Here. I'm a really big fan of pasta machine. This one comes from Cakebox Me in Dubai. Hello, Fatima. I absolutely love your pasta machine. I use all the time. And Rabia, hello. I love you. I'm still using your lipstick too. I miss everybody there, you know, Tamar in Dubai. So I'm using a pasta machine to open my fondant. And of course, you can use your rolling pin if you want. I'm using my blade again. 
And like I said to you, I do have templates of everything, so you can put your fondant on top of the template if you want. I don't like to make my suits too thick. You can cut actually this template if you want, but it's more or less what I need. And then we just put the suit in position. A little bit of glue, and then you put the suit in position and you bring to the front then of course you have to decide how you're gonna do if the suit is gonna be open if the suit is gonna be closed you know your bride will tell you what you want so on this case this little guy here I'm going to close his suit so I'm putting a little bit of glue I'm going to twist a little bit you see I'm just with my fingers I twist and then I'm gonna give a little pinch in here on the top to what I'm gonna cut the excess all right so now we're gonna add the arm to our groom got my fondant here mix a little bit of tie loose so we'll make a sausage and you also have the template on your instruction the way i usually say to my students is if you look at your arm you know usually finish it to your waist a little bit below your waist so the same thing goes to your groom the arm should be the same you know i like it to remove right there and then i put a little bit of glue there and i really mean very little now on this case because he is sitting down he can't just have his arms straight because that's not very natural position so he probably would have his hands on his legs so what i do is right here at the center of my arm i give a little pinch to create his elbow and then you just glue there and put the arm resting at his leg of course if you are making a figurine that the arms is up, you will have to insert a wire. I really try to avoid to put wire, EV skewers, uh, because you know you never know some a kid or you know maybe they have a big night they have a little bit too much to drink they're very happy they go get the figurine to eat and they could end up eating wire if it is a skewer I make sure to tell the bride there is a skewer in the middle of this figurine for the end of the arms like I say I like to use the that will help hold his hands in position put a little bit of Tylos glue but especially on this case in he, his hands is just resting at his leg it's not very necessary but on this case in here where his arm is just going against gravity then yes you need to have his spaghetti beach there inside we're gonna do his little hands so i decided to make him my frankenstein uh, i decided actually a complete change it and i'm going to make this groom as a frankenstein it's very simple it's a little ball remember like i said to you everything start with a little ball and you flat your little ball just flat like that remember this wedding couple is very simple and easy this is just for beginners this is not advanced wedding couple if you're gonna be more advanced then you would do different that's how you do you count your fingers just like that cut one by one and you turn around and with the bowling two right there and then i like to roll between my fingers to create his wrist say hello frankenstein hello and then of course you cut the end of his little hands get your to pick make it the hole little bit of glue there little bit of glue there a member of his thumb and of course you can do whatever you want you know you want to give it he make different positions with his fingers remember you have to cut you start the thumb on a different side right and left to hands for the boys i really don't mind to leave the fingers quite very square now we make his face so like i say to you for faces there's infinity we are doing halloween here all right so halloween theme we are making a skull i am using this mold that i made you have to watch the video how to make your mold i like to get a little bit of fondant and usually what i do is i just put a, my fondant there if you want to put a little bit of tie loose too to dry really quick you're very welcome because the with all these lights in here my fondant is going really soft so of course you can put a little bit of tie loose so it gets nice and hard make a ball put inside your mold these molds uh, that we make with silicone uh, they're really good like it's not like you need to add corn flour or nothing 
but uh, if you want you can always spray a little bit the oil too or corn flour and then I get the other half and I just push in and then when you take the mold you just cut it the excess this with your stainless knife I prefer do that then try to join the two halves and then of course with your finger you can uh, just take the, the markers off if you need to make his eye a little bit more round using your modeling tools you can do that if you want to make his mouth open you can insert your blade you know at this stage you can play around little tools that you have the rubber at the end they are incredible tools for modeling so then you can really accentuate the the nose you can really uh, accentuate the jaw you can do a lot of things with these little tools they are really good so of course don't forget to insert your skewer so you make the hole where the neck is gonna go you have to wait to dry and then when it's dry like this piece is dry already then you paint for painting uh, I'm using magical color any food good food color is really good for you magical color have these amazing paints they are no toxic proper for cake decorating so you just go and paint your figurine you can use even the gel colors if you want and paint inside the mouth like I did this one really use your creativity in working with the paints but for this little guy, the green guy I decided to use these molds they are for cake pops or marshmallow pops what do they call it's from Wilton and I went to my spotlight in Wollongong hi Jo remember you I told you I'm gonna tell everybody so if you're living in Wollongong area go at the spotlight on the party section downstairs talk with Jo they have fabulous things for Halloween right now Jo was showing me all around there and showing me what it was new and she showed me this one and I fell in love with it. it's from Wilton I made a little Frankenstein. Look at that, his head. I just push in the fondant. Very simple. I just push the black fondant, the green fondant, and then I paint by hands everything. Just put in his Frankenstein face right there. Look at that. Oh my God, that is a cool Frankenstein. So here we go. We have a groom, a, ske a skeleton groom, a Frankenstein groom, and we have a normal one. Well, at least he thinks he is normal for hair I just show you quick how to add hair for a figurine like that and as you can see this face is just a ball a little mark on his lips with one of these flower molds this is a flower cutter and I made his smile add his nose and two little eyes and then I will show you how to make his hair the hair is really quick too I just open the fondant I cut the circle of course some grooms don't need the hair but others need a lot of hair and some are like just a beaver they have too much hair <laughs> now you can play around of course your customer will send you the picture what the hair looks like but basically you have to secure the back in here all the way where the ear is and come a little bit for and then you have to look at the picture of your what your clients gonna send it to you so come in here with me to have a look at what I do on the front. So I'm going to cut the excess there. Then I'm going to become a hairdresser. Snippy, snippy. I can snip it as many times as I want. Another cut there. A cutting here if I want. If I wanted to, I can cut another triangle of fondant and I can add underneath and I keep I can keep adding of course you don't forget to add the little lines it's very important so you can go with your blade and add the little lines I also love to add sideburn it's back in fashion the boys love it and that makes the figurine look a little bit more masculine too and that's it he has a lot of hair look at that you should have put sandburns on the Frank stain too. <laughs> huh? He's looking a little bit too conservative. Let's put a little bit of sandburn on Frank stain. And that's it. Three very excited grooms. Very excited grooms. While standing up, 
and two sitting down. There you go. Next week we learn how to do the braid. Thank you so much for watching. Keep falling.